LBC 97.3. Call 0845 606973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC 973. This is London's biggest conversation with Anthony Davis. Tuesday night, LBC 97.3. Thank you for joining the programme tonight. I'm Anthony Davis. Let's start by turning our attention to the airport expansion debate. A new battle looms over a Heathrow third runway, or a second runway, at Gatwick. This is after Sir Howard Davis has uh, reported in his Independent Airports Commission report saying that additional capacity was indeed needed in the southeast of England. Extra runways at our two biggest airports are now on the short list. It kind of means that Boris Johnson has a little egg on his face, although I think they're going to have a little sniff around the Isle of Grain to see if they can make something happen. They'll certainly rule it out, because clearly that was never going to work. But we do certainly need to do something as the likes of China and India and the Middle East build airports every 20 minutes. So, where is your preferred location for expansion? 0845 6060 973 is the number to call. That's 0845 6060 973. Uh, Heathrow? Gatwick, maybe you were a Stansted fan, but that one has certainly been kicked into the long grass. Now, for those of us that live in London, in West London, certainly, and I live right under the flight path of Heathrow Airport, I live about 14 or 13 miles out on the final. Uh, They go over my flat at around 2,800 feet, and I love them. More planes the merrier. Bring them on, I say. And <laughs> I, I don't think I'm in a minority because everybody I know loves the planes. You live in London. You've always lived with the planes overhead. So why is it such a big deal? 0845 6060 973. All views are welcome. And let's get a view now from the MP for Richmond Park and North Kingston, Zach Goldsmith. Zach, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for joining us on the programme. Now, it's not great for you tonight, is it, based upon your campaign? Certainly, you didn't want to see Heathrow expanded because it's your constituency that the planes fly over. Yeah, I mean, there's massive, massive opposition in in my constituency, and there's no doubt about that. There was a referendum held. Obviously, it wasn't a a legal one, doesn't have teeth, but it was professionally organised by the Electoral Reform Society, and it was a kind of Zimbabwean result. You know, I think it was around 90%, uh, 85 to 90% of people voted against, and it was a huge turnout. And how, how many people 000. turned out, 100,000? Well, I, it, I can tell you that it was 100,000 people between two constituencies, and given that the electorate would probably be around 140,000 for two constituencies, it's a pretty high turnout, and most of those people were in Richmond. But there's 8.5 so million, million people in London, Zach. Well, I, I, we didn't do a London-wide a referendum, and so it's, it's, it, I, can't, I can't tell you what the view is across London, but I can tell you that for people in Richmond, people I represent, it is a massive issue. I mean, it is, it is the, it's the issue I'm written to about most often, um, it, it, both local and national. It's, it dominates my inbox, and it always has. Is Everything it noise or pollution that people complain about? Well, it's the noise. I mean, actually, it's mostly night flights. That's the main issue. Because it only takes one very noisy plane at 4.30 and everyone gets woken up. And that annoys a lot of people. Um, but it's just that, you know, the teachers complain about the schools and parents complain that their kids don't, you know, can't spend quality time outdoors when you've got planes going over every minute. It's, it's just, it, it's principally a noise issue. People are worried about the pollution, but I think noise is the, the number one concern. And is there concern that the airport activity has actually got worse for them, that there are more planes in the sky? Because they must have known that the busiest airport in the world was on their doorstep when they moved into the area. Yeah, I mean, look, numbers have, very recently, I don't think numbers have increased. Over time, obviously, they have increased, and there's always going to be a tension. There always has been a tension, but it's not an unhealthy tension. As you say, most people came here, um, you know, I, I moved in when I was about six months old, 38 years ago. He thought I was already here, so I personally don't feel that I have the right to demand the closure of Heathrow. But then most people in, in, in my constituency are not asking for Heathrow to be closed. What they're asking for is for it not to be doubled or not to have a third runway, which would represent a 50% increase. And I think people do have the right to make that demand because everyone here at one point or another has been promised by the authorities, by BAA, by politicians, that that won't happen. 
So I, I, I don't think it's a case of people have turned up, bought their homes, moved into the area, taken advantage of good schools, and then said, by the way, we, we want you to get rid of Heathrow. That's not what people are asking for. They just don't want it to get worse. And they know that if there was a third runway and potentially even a fourth runway, if things would get a lot worse. And that, I think people have a right to object. There's a lot of people in your constituencies, though, that work at Heathrow. It's very much a, a, a city for those who work there, and those that do work there, even those on the proposed sites for demolition, are in support of uh, an additional runway and expansion at the airport. Well, no, I don't think anyone suggests... Well, that's not true. There are people who are suggesting closing Heathrow down and moving it. I'm not suggesting There's that. one bloke who's think, suggesting that, one yeah, bloke. Yeah, and, 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 you know, it's a, it's a legitimate position. It's not my position. I don't, I don't think Heathrow needs to be closed down, and I don't think those jobs you're talking about should be in question in any sense at all. I mean, there's no... You know, I, I think Heathrow has a lot to offer. If we were starting out from scratch today, I think we wouldn't build it where it is for all the obvious reasons, but it's there. And I personally don't think it should be closed down. But, but I don't, equally, I don't buy into the idea that BAA has, or now it's called Heathrow Limited, has very successfully put across that it has to be a mega hub. I don't think those arguments stand anymore. But it, it is already think, a mega hub, though, isn't it? And, and people want okay, to fly into Heathrow it. around the world. They think of Heathrow as being London Airport, and they want to come to Heathrow. And I've spoken to people from outside of the UK, and I talked to them about the idea of Gatwick or Luton or Stansted, and they pull a face. Where's that, they say? But, I mean, that, you know, there was a time when Heathrow wouldn't have been known. I, I, don't, I don't think that, that that is a necessarily a valid argument. One of the reasons people don't like Stansted is because the, the links are so terrible. It, it takes a hell of a long time to get there, and if you arrive on a late, you know, late flight, it's almost impossible to get out of there. It's, um, it's, you know, for me, the priority now, if we want to have a, a healthy kind of London hub approach, we, we don't create a massive, great, big foreign-owned monopoly on one edge of our very large city, we, we create a sort of a, a multi-hub, a London approach, and that means allowing those three airports to compete. And the best way to do that is by investing in surface transport links. So extending Crossrail, for example, to Stansted would make it a very attractive airport, particularly for people who are flying in for work reasons, flying into the city of London. It makes, it makes more sense, but you need those links on the ground before you... Before mm. you but cr that Crossrail, is, Crossrail is going to make Heathrow an even more attractive proposition as it joins up uh, east to west and west to east. Let's just talk about the political aspect of this. Why, why is this such a, uh, such a contentious issue politically? Why, why is it something that has been passed over to a supposedly independent report so that politicians, I guess, don't have to make a decision about it? I mean, you're stepping forward and, and uh, being very vocal, which is wonderful from your constituents' point of view, but politically, the Conservative Party, which you re represent, they, uh, they don't want to make a decision about this, not with a general election 18 months away. I think because, well, number one, it's a big decision. Um, you know, if, you, if, 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 the, if whatever government decides to expand Heathrow, obviously you've got the, the, the quality of life issues for the people affected, and, and you just have to bear in mind that of all the people in Europe affected negatively by aircraft noise, according to the CAA, nearly a third live in and around Heathrow. Well, there are thousands and thousands of airports across Europe. This one airport is so disproportionately impactful on people's lives that to increase it is a big deal. So that's one reason why the politics matters. Another reason is that Howard Davis and all his predecessors haven't come up with an answer as to how to deal with the surface congestion. So you've got one runway would lead to, according to the last Labour government, 25 million extra road passenger journeys. Well, I can't imagine our roads dealing with that. And yet that doesn't feature in today's report. There's, there's, there are no answers there. So we are going to be facing gridlock. That's another headache. And it's not just a localized headache. It obviously has ripple effect across the board. But the main reason it is a political nightmare for my party in particular is that David Cameron, as you will know, came to my constituency, went to neighboring constituencies. He spoke to pretty much all the areas affected. And he came here before the election with one very clear message. He said, no ifs, no buts, there won't be Heathrow expansion, there will be no third runway. And it was, it was a big deal. I mean, I, I saw him deliver that pledge at public meetings in Richmond. I know <laughs> he did the same elsewhere. And I know that a lot of people chose sometimes for the first time to vote Conservative on the back of that message. You know, it really resonated. But, but if, if, he can turn that, his, if he can U-turn on military action in Syria, Zach, he can certainly U-turn on a third runway at Heathrow. Well, it's not. I mean, there was no manifesto commitment to 
Syria, I mean, intervention or otherwise. It's a, it's a big deal when you go to people and you say, this is what I'm going to do if you back me, if you vote for me, and if you make me prime minister, this is what I'm going to do. To then not do it or to do the opposite is a big deal. You know, you know perhaps better than anyone. You have a talk show. People call in. Whenever you talk about politics, people complain. You know, all politicians are the same. They're all corrupt. They're all lying. They're all this. They're all that. The reason people are so hateful towards politicians, and perhaps justifiably so, is because politicians have got a reputation for lying, for breaking promises, for saying anything to get elected and then doing the opposite. I mean, I, 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 I'm a regular listener to your show. I don't think I've ever heard an, an episode of your show where people haven't called in and grumbled about politicians as a whole. Well, this is why. And I think it's about time politicians start learning that when they make a promise, they've got to keep it. And if they don't keep it, they've got to be held accountable. It's a, it's a much bigger issue, in my view, even than Heathrow. This is about integrity, it's about principles, and it's about <laughs> believability. And it brings and us nicely fun. to uh, your own position, which you've uh, publicly said that you would uh, stand down as an MP if a third runway was built at Heathrow. Uh, you still stand by that? Yeah, I mean, if, if my party does a U-turn on this issue, I'm obliged to trigger a by-election because I've said before the election that that's what I do. You know, a lot of people believe David Cameron, but a lot of people were very skeptical. They said, what do we do if he's lying? What do we do if he breaks his promise? To which my answer was, well, you know, I'm cynical as well. I'm, I'm suspicious of politicians. But if he, if he breaks his promise, I will make sure you have a chance to vote again. And therefore, if we do see a U-turn, I'm obliged to trigger a by-election. Will you be standing as an independent candidate in a by-election? That I don't know, but regardless, you've already promised to pay for my leaving party. I have promised to pay for a gazebo (laughs) that can handle around 50 or 60 people. I'm sure it'll be more popular than that, but they'll have to get wet. And I uh, I want want it to be in the shadow of the flight pass so we can't hear anything. We can't hear a word of what anyone's saying to us. So I, the, whole, the whole constituency is in the flight path, so right. it won't be a problem. OK, well, thank you very much for joining us on LBC yeah, 97.3 you tonight. All the best to you. Thanks. Zach Goldsmith, who is, of course, the Conservative MP for Richmond Park and North Kingston, who has been a, a very vocal opponent of expansion at Heathrow, and you've heard it there from him. He uh, intends to stand by his word, which is rare for a politician to stand by his word and step down if a third runway goes ahead. Maybe the Conservative Party will be pleased to see the back of him if he is uh, somebody who stands against them. I don't know, but it's nice to hear a politician with integrity, and I do believe that he has that.